Today we're going to be taking a look at ball position and we're going to be using TrackMan to give you some absolutely vital information that you need to know about ball position and the effects that it can have on your swing and ball flight. Welcome back to the Forest of Arden. We are talking about ball position and do not let that blue sky fool you. It is absolutely freezing this morning. And also a warm welcome to all the Golf WRX viewers. Today, you are going to learn all about ball position. So you're gonna learn about the effects of ball position when it gets moved forwards or back in your stance. You're going to learn how your golf swing has to adapt in order to accommodate that change. You're also going to learn how that changes the club's delivery and the resulting ball flight. This for me is absolutely vital information for golfers to be aware of because all too often I'll go out on the golf course and I'll hear people saying to their friends, your ball position is too far forward, your ball position is too far back, you should be playing it off the inside of the left heel, you should be playing it off the centre of stance, whatever it may be. And they're offering that advice or that information without really having that deep understanding about what is actually going to change when we move that golf ball around. We're going to use Trapman down here to give us the data. I've got my phone in my pocket. We're gonna have a look at that data and we're gonna to go to extremes. We're gonna move that ball excessively forwards and excessively back. And we're actually gonna get you to pause the video in a moment and actually post your comments below as to what you think is actually going to happen when we move that ball position around. So I've got myself a six line here. Now, a bit of practice, a bit of work on my swing, my club path, so that's the direction my club is traveling in, gets pretty neutral. It tends to get a little bit right if I'm not playing too well, but it gets pretty neutral. That tends to give me the ability to hit straight goal shots, provided I can place the club face in the right position, I can strike it from the middle. So we're gonna move this golf ball now for this first shot, and we're gonna put it excessively forwards in the stance. So somewhere out here, middle of my foot, maybe even towards the little, uh, little toe of my lead foot. Now, I appreciate that no one really out there is ever going to play the six iron from here, but we're just using it to highlight what would actually happen. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take a setup and hit a shot when the golf ball is excessively back from here. So in terms of how my club is delivered to the golf ball, so club path, maybe attack angle, uh, and potentially the likely shots I would hit from there, pause the video now, Joe down in the comments box, let me know what you think is going to happen when I have the ball excessively forward and when I have the ball excessively back and then when we come back we're going to go through those shots and we're going to play so pause the video now go down there post your comments and we'll be back in two seconds okay right so what we're going to do first shot here ball is going to go excessively forward in the stance so we're going to hit a shot and we're going to see what trackman says in terms of the data okay and that ball went pretty far left uh, okay, so on that particular shot, my club path, though the direction that my club was travelling in, was 11.1 degrees left of the target, the target being the flag in the distance. So my club was travelling excessively left of target. No surprise, therefore, that the ball went excessively left. I hit 9.2 degrees down on the golf ball. So my club was travelling severely down into the ground by 9.2 degrees. Now those numbers, those delivery numbers, are not really going to help me play the best golf. So let's go ahead and place the golf ball excessively back in my stance and let's see what happens. Now, based on what's just happened from that first one, you can probably have a little bit of a guess as to what's going to happen on this one. So ball is way, way further back than I would ever play it for a six iron. But we're just going to kind of see what happens from here. Okay, and the ball started at a very different place. It had a very, very different curve on the golf ball. So let's see what happened to the club path that time. So on that particular swing, my club path was not 11 degrees left, but it was 8.9 degrees out to the right. So somewhere maybe up into those trees on the right there. And I did hit down on the ball, but I hit down by 0 0.5 degrees. So pretty level, which is why there was no divot on that second shot. And that ball started excessively right to the target and it had quite a bit of curve to the left. So effectively, I've not intentionally tried to make any different golf swing, but there is two club paths there, which are 11 and nine. So that's 20 degrees difference in the club path. And there is absolutely no chance that without making any other adjustments, I would be able to hit straight shots from those positions. So let's quickly go through kind of why those things have happened and, and 
what actually changed my goals to produce those impacts. And we have to think a little bit about the circle, the way that we swing the golf club. So that's the, this kind of shape here and how that would be adjusted for me to you know, hit a goal shot from that position. Just have a look at what would happen if I was to set up here. Now, if I place my circle in there, this is my normal swing circle. Notice how the bottom of my circle is around about here. And so the golf ball, when I had it forward in the stance, was way, way out here. Notice how the part of my circle where that ball is, is starting to move up away from the ground. So in theory, when that ball is excessively forwards, we would expect to see a club path or an attack angle, I should say, which is working up away from the ground. So a positive attack angle, but it was actually negative. And when I have the ball back here, you can see there's my circle. You'd expect that when I hit this golf ball, you'd expect the golf club to be traveling excessively downwards into the ground. So a very negative attack angle. But again, it wasn't, it was a fairly level attack angle. So why is that the case? Well, because this golf ball was so far forwards, my normal golf swing would cause my golf club to bottom out somewhere around about here. What would then happen is the club would start to rise up and I would actually probably get that towards the top of the ball. And that ball would probably roll on the ground. So what I have to do when that ball is excessively far forwards is I have to take the circle that I swing on and I have to twist it this way to get the lowest part of the swing somewhere near the golf ball. And when I do that, I'm able to pretty well strike the ball at the middle of the club and that first one was a pretty good strike. But what I've had to do is I've had to excessively twist my circle so that I end up swinging excessively left. When that ball is back here, again, the low point would normally be somewhere around about here. If I didn't change anything, I would come down, I'd probably catch the top of the golf ball. So again, I have to take my circle, I have to twist it to the right, which moves the low point more back, which helps me strike the ball better. But you can see what's happening, it's twisting it and I'm gonna swing way out to the right. Now those things I didn't intentionally do, I didn't stand there and try and change my swing shape or my swing direction but I was just conscious that I had to hit the golf ball the golf ball was forward in my stance and I just had to do whatever I needed to to strike that golf ball and the same when the ball is back so like we said a moment ago they were pretty extreme examples but you know the same thing would happen if that ball got moved two inches forward or two inches back so if there's a golfer out there who's potentially setting up with the golf ball a little bit too far forward there's a very, very good chance that they will actually be changing the shape and the dynamics of their swing in order to make some sort of contact with the golf ball. That contact, which is now out the middle of the club, might feel great, but it's the expense of the club path going to the left. The golfers who tend to play the golf ball further back in the stance potentially will have this loop in their downswing because they're trying to move the low point further back and make contact with the golf ball. So having an appreciation of as that ball moves in your stance, forward or back, it will change the shape of your swing. You will do something different to make that club arrive at the ball and strike the middle. That movement that you make subconsciously will change the path. It will change the attack angle. It will change the ball's start direction. It will change the ball's curve. It will change the trajectory. It will change the ball speed. All of these things will change unintentionally just because the ball has been moved two inches forward and two inches back. So that information, can actually help. So if I was trying to draw the golf ball, I certainly wouldn't put the ball forward in my stance because that's going to be more of a fade bias ball position. If I wanted to draw the ball, I'm going to be putting it a little bit further back in my stance. So for those of you out there who are fading the golf ball, slicing the golf ball, a ball position that is slightly further back potentially could help you because it's going to move your path more out to the right. What's going to happen if we have the ball in the middle of the stance? Well, that's really where we'd kind of like it to be because that allows us to make a fairly neutral golf swing and it allows us to produce fairly straight shots. I'm almost, it's almost impossible for me to hit a straight shot from here and a straight shot from here. I might be able to get those balls to finish on target, but they're going to have excessive curves. They're going to start offline and have to work towards the target. So, just think about the longer clubs in your bag, the three woods, the drivers. What we've just said there is as the ball moves forward in the stance, we tend to swing more over the top. We tend to swing more left to make contact, which is why so many golfers with those three woods and drivers will swing over the top. They'll swing left. They'll hit down on the driver. They'll hit the slices, the low shots that have no distance. A lot of that is you reacting to where that golf ball is. And that reaction is unconscious, but it changes the shape of your swing. So we really have to think about what we're doing with our ball position, how we can use our ball position 
to help us with our golf swing because so many golfers I see, the ball position is actually sending them down a route they don't want to go down. It's causing them to make some moves that they really don't want to make and that has its effect on the ball flight that we don't really want. So let's hit one pretty normal now from the middle of my stance and this is the best place for me to be able to hit a fairly straight shot with not a lot of curve. And pretty much just like that, with well, the wind off the right, that's pretty good, now I take that. So ball position, is so important that you get it right. There is absolutely no one ball position that suits everybody. It has to be individual to you, but a real little bit more deeper knowledge of that ball position, how changing it can affect what happens of impact, I think is really important. I think it's gonna help lots of golfers out there. Thank you very much for watching. Really hope that is helpful. Please share this video if you think you, you know someone who could benefit from this, or even share it with that person who gives that advice on the golf course, that really knowing what they're actually doing to that golfer and their ball flight. Usual stuff is down below, comments box, like button, all that kind of stuff, and we'll hopefully see you back here for a future video. Thanks for watching.